uh, to further have this conversation with us is uh, Mr. Matthew Oluku. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Mr. Matthew. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, it's been a, a lot to talk about over the weekend. Uh, the news uh, has been buzzing, especially on social media, people dragging the Nigerian judiciary. Uh, judiciary. And uh, a lot of, we already, you know, part of the school of thought out there, actually, uh, people saying we already didn't have a lot of confidence in the judiciary. And then, you know, having this type of <clears throat> incident come up at a time like this when uh, the judiciary should be doing everything in their power to win over the populace, the, the public, uh, again on their side. Um, but before we get to that point of the conversation, how do you react to the judgments passed? Uh, for me, I've always said that I don't have confidence in Nigerian uh, judicial system. Mm. And I think if you look at what the statement that came from uh, the governor of Bauchi State, and even the statement that came from the Office of Governor of Kano State, it lends credence to my position. Mm. Because if you look at what the Governor of Bauchi State, um, governor of Bauchi State he said he had to relocate Abuja. That he didn't sleep for seven good days to make sure he was able to reclaim the mandate. So I begin to wonder, what role do, does the governor have to play? Mm -hmm. Having assigned your case to lawyers who are handling it. So what role does, uh, does the governor need to play in the litigation of such case? And he went for that to say that former leaders of Bauchi State told lies against him to the government at the center that he was a threat to the government or rather he's a threat to the government that he was appreciating the government at the center that they didn't listen to those lies so he got to show that from his own analysis if they had listened to those what he uh, regarded as lies it means the government had to have a way of influencing the decision of the court and that is wrong all right. Um, the Supreme Court overturned most of these judgments that were given by the um, appellate court. And other schools of thought have, you know, come out to say that this uh, Supreme Court's position is part of what is fueling the crisis, I mean, going on between the public and, you know, affecting the confidence of the public in the Nigerian judiciary. Do you agree with this? Um, for me, you know, it, I think we need to amend some sections of our constitution. Because if you look at even when the lower court and the electoral tribunal mm. give judgment in almost all the cases, they were equally citing some relevant sections of this constitution to back up their judgment. And the Supreme Court, when they would give their own judgment to invalidate those uh, judgments, they equally cited some sections of the constitution, particularly in the case of Kano. Um, it has to do with the uh, ballot papers not being stamped. And according to the wisdom of the Supreme Court, they said since the, those ballot papers had um, an ECH logo mm. and Nigerian coat of arm, that that is, well, that is what is required by law. And don't forget that even before now, Fallon have argued that it, it would be wrong for you to use the negligence of any pertinence to punish a candidate. So I think there is need to amend some uh, relevant sections of our Electra Act to streamline what a, a judge should do in any circumstance. Mm. All right, now, since this day on the reactions of the Supreme Court, you know, over the weekend there were various um, newspapers that were reportedly giving the same headline stories. You know, are you talking about that of the Tribune that say the governor thanks Tinumbu, that's governor of Kano State? It's funny. Thanking Tinumbu. And of course, Shatima for their non interference. And of course, other newspapers also reported that of OT, who also thanked Tinumbo for his non interference in this issue. Now, the question now remains Are we seeing a situation of one man being more powerful than the institution itself, giving the reason they are giving thanks to him as regards why they should even give thanks to the people, the electorate, who actually voted them in mass? to make sure that they won that election? Or is it a case of, if the number had interfered, perhaps what we would have seen would have been what was seen earlier in the previous cases that were upheld in the court? Um, I cannot speak on the previous cases, because, but let us speak on this particular issue. Yes. From inference we can draw, the inference we can draw from this is that 
if the president had interfered, it means he had the capacity to influence the outcome. But if we are seeing the um, Kano State government appreciating the president, we are seeing Bauchi State government appreciating the president, and the other governor from the southeast appreciating the president, it goes to show that our we don't have independent arms of government. Mm. It goes to show that the judiciary is not independent. And that will even remind us of the revelation. Is it a revelation that came from Senator Bukachiwa? It goes to show that we need to strengthen or rather make judiciary truly independent. So it means that the president would have actually interfered in the That case. I don't know. We are, so we why, are, the we hailing, are, why the hailing of the president? Uh, well, the case. conversation is around why should the governors be appreciating effort of the president for not interfering? Do the constitution give Mr. President a position to interfere? Obviously, no. So it beats our imagination why uh, a governor should, uh, should not sleep for seven days. Because perhaps, I don't know, maybe he's trying to reach out to the presidency that he's not a, uh, he's not a threat to his government. Because he said some uh, um, former leaders of his state have reached out to the government uh, trying to tell us against him that he's a threat to the government. So for him to be appreciating that the government did not listen to them, it means he have his own way of disabusing the mind of the president that actually these are lies. And unfortunately, um, in the right thing to do is that the government, whether at the center, at the state level, at the local government level, have no uh, role to play in litigation. Once you hand your case over to your legal team, you provide them with all the necessary information where money is needed, you pay. Of course, you wait for the court to give judgment. I don't know why somebody should be uh, looking for political solution in a case that is already in court. All right, uh, let us take a look at the 11 national and state assembly members whose also judgments were also overturned. And during my intro, I did mention that um, the, the Plutus State Governorship Petition case has caused outrage among senior lawyers who lamented that these national and state assembly members, sacked by the appellate court decision, lacks or has no judicial remedy. First of all, when you say it has no judicial remedy, what does that even mean? And secondly, do we get to a point where these people are reinstated and given you know, the positions that they deserve? Or when you say it has no judicial remedy, it means they've lost and they've lost out? Is that what uh, it means? I think the reason that I say it has no judicial remedy is cases involving House of Assembly and National Assembly terminates at the Court of Appeal. Mm. It cannot go to Supreme Court. It means... Court of Appeal is the highest arbiter in those cases. It means the man who have lost cannot appeal to the Supreme Court. But unfortunately, the ground upon which the Supreme Court, sorry, uh, the Court of Appeal sacked them is similar to the ground upon which the Supreme Court is overturning, obtaining decisions of mm -hmm. the same Court of Appeal. So I think that is the reason people are sympathizing with those. Uh, Sacked House of Assembly. In your, in your earlier submission, you did mention that some parts of our constitution needs to be, you know, amended and changed. We've had amendments, you know, in the past, especially I think the last one was in 1999. And since then, there has been conversations around, you know, how that the, the Nigerian constitution is not very um, properly put together, if I'm to say, if I'm to put it that way. It, it, it appears that some parts of the constitution were intentionally uh, stated and written the way it is to probably favor uh, a few uh, as against the majority. Do you agree with that? And do you think that would ever get to, get to a point, you know, with the way that Nigeria is going now as a country, that would ever get to a point where we have another amendment? And is an amendment what we really need right now? Uh, the issue is, I may not totally agree with you hmm. because at times when uh, the drafters of the constitution, when they uh, draft the constitution, they may not know the shortcomings. Hmm. By the time you try to put it into practice, those shortcomings will start rearing their ugly heads. So that is why there is need and provision for amendments. But I think one thing is fundamental. Because if you look at the decision of that um, canon in particular, you begin to wonder the if Supreme Court had ruled, uh, sorry, if Supreme Court had upheld the decision of the Court of Appeal, mm. it means the governor of Kano State would have lost, uh, lost his position. 
And if you look at the, like I mentioned, what Falana said, that this was negligence on the part of any person else, not the fault of the candidates. Perhaps because some ballot boss, sorry, papers that ran into about 165,665 uh, numbers or so were not stamped or signed. And you, uh, you are using that grant to deduct that number of votes from a candidate. Mm. So what I'm trying to say in essence is, does it mean this other person else should not be sanctioned? Well, it's purely negligence. If that grant was enough for Supreme Court to sack that governor, so does it mean those people that committed those uh, derelictions of duty mm -hmm. would have just walked away freely and somebody is losing his mandate? So those are the areas I'm saying, let us amend some regular section of this constitution so that if you are given a position of responsibility, you fail in that responsibility, there should be sanction. Mm -hmm.